Hello, everyone. Please let me know if you can hear me. If you're here, I don't know if anybody's here just yet. Ah, now there's 14 of you. Uh, first of all, let me know that you can hear me. Okay, um, I'm going to explain my little setup here in a second because it might look a little different to you. See Timothy Bagshaw's here. Devin, good to see you. Malcolm Henderson, Paul Raven, Epley, Dominique. Epley, thank you so much. Epley says he can hear me. Boss, hello. Onan, what's up? Mar, thank you very much. Alexander, thank you. Is it Professor X, what's up? Good to see you. Um, Om. Rela Carr, hello. Hope you're doing well over in India. Um, as you might be able to see, my camera quality is a little better than normal. Uh, at least I hope it is. It, it is to me here what I see on my screen. I'm using my actual camera. I found a way to set it up to use for live streams. Um, so you see me looking down because I'm looking at my computer. My camera's up here but I need to look here so I can see your comments. So I'll be kind of looking down the whole time. Um, I had a microphone that I was gonna set up, but I ran out of ports and ran into a snafu I wasn't expecting. So just using AirPods, hopefully it works. It looks like there's a little bit of a delay, but maybe it's not too bad, I hope, um, in terms of the video. But anyway, hope you guys are all well. Let me know what you are wearing today or tonight. If anything, what did what have you sprayed? What are you enjoying? Let me know. Hello, Mapko in Serbia. Wow, I'd love to go to Serbia sometime. Stuart Long, good to see you. What's up, Paul Dotti? Eduardo, hello. Chris King, what's up? Thanks for being here. Dr. Muhammad, hello, good to see you, sir. Jorge, what's up? David Crawford, I'm Goldendale, all right. Alta Trading, what's up? Boz said he just got danger by Raja. Man, that stuff is amazing. I think I featured that in an upcoming video that I filmed the other day. Uh, Anthony Don't Frio Music is wearing Elite White, good stuff. Have yet to try, but I hear it's similar to Galloway from Parfum and Marley. And I think I know it came out before Galloway. Uh, at the Barbers, good stuff. Epley said he got his first compliment ever that wasn't from his mom. <laughs> Layton, hey man, that one is easy to compliment. Congratulations. Uh, Dior Om Cologne, Thomas is wearing that. That's a good one, it must be hot. Uh, and that's a great, for the, great one for the heat. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks for being a part of it. If you guys missed my video yesterday, I was responding to a bunch of your comments about my favorite fragrances and it was a funny time. So go check that out if you missed it. Um, Paul is wearing ombre leather, EDP. All right, I haven't heard, okay, the original uh, EDP. I haven't tried the Parfum version, the new one. Teresa, hello, how are you? Classy as our poor home. Can't go wrong with that. I'm checking out Rasputin and Iron Duke. Stuart, are you talking about Rasputin from Sweet Off? And is Iron Duke from, uh, what's the name of that brand? Beaufort, Beaufort? I haven't tried that one. I have tried Rasputin if it is the one from Sweet Off, unless it's another one. Ebony Wood from Zara. All right, I haven't tried it. Tater Mez EDT, love that one, absolute classic. Hey, Tammy, I'm watch Fate Woman. Okay, I haven't tried Fate Woman. I have tried Fate Man, and that is one heck of a frag. I hear it's discontinued. I might need to try to pick it up uh, because I tried it and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was an eye opener for sure. 
uh, love haul videos. All right. Free salsa. What's up? Coach from men. Keep it simple. Nothing wrong with that. Bortnikoff. I still have yet to try this brand. I need to try Bortnikoff. Just got K Bridge. I'm not sure I know what that is, Vaughn. What is that exactly? Good to see you, though. Let's see. Boz and Epley know each other. Oh, good for you. <laughs> uh, wearing Rose Rose by Bulgari. Bulgari. Wonderful. Hello. Thank you very much. Grace is in the other room. Caron Sport. I need to try that one. I'm a big, house, big fan of the house, and I have yet to try uh, several of them. Eating Chicago high today. Malcolm, what does that mean? <laughs> Wearing. Okay. <laughs> God. Uh, let's see here. Joe Blyer, thank you very much. Buford. Okay. Stuart, awesome. Yeah, I've heard that brand is pretty out there. I need to try that. Um, Thoughts on K-Bridge. I, again, I don't know exactly what that is, Vaughn. <laughs> I need to do some research. That doesn't ring a bell. Um, blend Oud, Cyril. It's funny you say Blend Oud. We're going to be smelling a bunch of Blend Ouds today. So, and I, for the first time, I, there's many, I mean, I haven't tried the brand at all. I'm, I'm a total infant to the brand. Hey, John, good to see you. Wood Infusion by Goldfield and Banks. I haven't tried that. I've been so far behind on Goldfield and Banks. I've only tried one fragrance, and that was Pacific Rock Moss years ago. I haven't tried anything else since. Um, let's see. Portrait of a Lady Tonight, Joe. All right. I still have to try that, believe it or not. I still have to try that from Frederick Mall. And a lot of you guys made me aware that I'm behind. Well, I already know I'm behind on Frederick Mall. They were not featured in my top 20 niche fragrance brands video simply because I don't have a lot of experience with them. So I need to fix that. I've smelled a few. I haven't loved all of the ones I've smelled, but I know that they have some very, I mean, they have what I'm looking for. Uniqueness, artistry, I'm looking for that. Okay. You already know, David. Can't go wrong. Love that stuff. Zerzhov K Bridge. Thank you. I don't know that one. Haven't haven't tried it. Uh, let's see. Gucci Guilty Cologne. I actually haven't tried that one. I heard mixed things about it, but for that reason, I was interested because I heard it was not like your typical cologne scent. My teeth are bright. Man, that's not even true. Do your thing. <laughs> they make K, yeah, just like Dolce & Gabbana. Um, Knight's Bridge. Thank you, Paul. Not, a, not familiar. Aqua Celestia. That's a great one. Beautiful scent. Fathom V, like Green Irish Tweed, cranked up a touch more floor. I still need to try the brand. I've been having people reach out to me about them. Man, you keep missing Spice Bomb. No. <laughs> I, I mean, I've spent, I spent plenty of time with Spice Bomb. So that's all I got to say. Uh, Tabak Rouge from BDK. Tabak Rouge or Tabak Rose? Um, I have Tabak Rose, which is fantastic. Unless there's a Tabak Rouge, I have Rouge Smoking as well. So it sounds like you maybe combine the two. Um, must grab is your greatest frags. Good to see you, Ryan. Thanks for being here. Ross is in the house. What's up, man? Okay. Well, um, yeah, we got a good number of you in here. I really appreciate y'all being here on this Saturday. Uh, we're going to smell a bunch of stuff. Um, First of all, I see Nomo for you. Do I still like Versace Down Blue? I haven't smelled it since I had it and sold it. Um, it's not inspiring to me. It smells nice, but um, at this point, I'm looking for stuff that actually, and you know, captures my interest, not just 
to smell good to other people. Um, so to give you a little preview of what we're dealing with here, this is a box of fragrances. We have another box that came all the way from Oman, from Amouage, and we'll get to that one a little later. Um, the first thing I want to say before I talk about any fragrances is, first of all, waffles. Thank you very much. Would really appreciate that, y'all. Um, check out the description of this video. Um, you don't have to do it right now, but maybe just open it up and kind of skim it while I'm speaking. Um, because that, what I've written in the description of the video is way more important to me than any of the fragrances I'm going to be talking about today. Um, basically what it says is what you're going to see here, this big box of fragrances, this is not normal. This is not normal. This is something that I want to keep separate from you and your life. Us as reviewers, Ross TLTG Reviews can relate to this. Um, in a way, we are, how do I put this? You have to let us do the hauling and the blind buying and all that. Let us be a filter. Um, please, if you can avoid it, do not go out and buy five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 bottles at a time because you see other people doing that. You don't have to do that. Again, I, I could say more, but I really do encourage you to read the description. I think I typed it out a little bit more eloquently than I'm saying it now. Um, I just want to stress that this is not normal. So don't feel compelled to get a bunch of stuff all at once. And also, as I said in the description, I didn't pay for any of these bottles. These are all sent to me as gifts. So that makes it even more unrealistic. That is kind of the divide here between um, where, you know, you and me, I guess. Just I've received all these fragrances as gifts. So it makes it look easy. It's like, yeah, I got all these fragrances. It's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I'm happy to have them. But I just want to lift the veil and just, you know, keep you, keep everything in reality. You know, don't worry about buying a bunch of fragrances at once. Take your time. Enjoy what you have. If something sounds interesting to you, get a decant. There is no rush. Paul Raven, that's right. It can become a real problem. Always enjoy what you have before acquiring new ones. Moderation is the way with everything. Could not agree more. Everybody needs to take that to heart. Moderation is the key. If you want to, <clears throat> if you want to have longevity in your passion in this hobby, stretch it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stretch it out. No hurry. So uh, let's dive into this. Again, there's, we got a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff here. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a fragrance brand that maybe you guys already know. And that is Mask Milano. I got to hold it up here. I got to remember. Mask Milano. I have a couple fragrances from them. And I love their stuff. I've tried a lot of their stuff over the years. And I really enjoy it. Uh, very artistic. Very thoughtful. Very transportive. This particular fragrance is called Slight of Fern. Man, isn't that something? We got auto focus on live stream now. Man, that is a game changer. Slight of Fern. I don't know anything about this fragrance, and I don't know anything about the fragrance, any of the other fragrances. <laughs> I know nothing, so I'm as blind as you are if you haven't tried these. Um, I like I saw some I wanted to address. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Anyway. Um, oh, yeah. All of the fragrances I'll be talking about here, aside from the Amouage, which you saw in the thumbnail, which we'll get to, all of these were sent to me by Max Aroma. I love Max Aroma. I talk about them all the time. You probably already have shopped with them before, so you don't need me to uh, vouch for them. But 
Uh, they are a great source, obviously, of some great fragrances. You can also get samples and decants there. And um, I do have a link in the description. As it says, it is an affiliate link. So if you do decide to make any purchases, it does uh, support the channel. I do get a little bit of a kickback at no additional cost to you. But again, that's just there. You don't obviously have to do that. Do whatever you want. Okay, let's give Slide of Fern a, a spray. Because we have so many fragrances here, I might spray a couple of them on my skin, but most of them I'm going to put on blotters because it's just going to get ridiculous. I have too many of them, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them are very strong. So I will just ruin my entire experience, and I won't give you guys an accurate assessment here, even though this is not very accurate either. But we're doing our best. Okay, let's give Slide of Fern a spray. So what I like to do when I try a new fragrance for the first time is I smell it blind. I don't, it's already in the air. Well, I don't, it's already changing in the air. Well, I don't look at any notes until after I've kind of had my first impression. And then I kind of try to supplement what I've been smelling by looking at the notes. Uh, let's see. I see people talking about the algorithm. What's going on with the algorithm? Joe says, oh, it helps with the algorithm. Liking helps with the algorithm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't need to we don't need to argue about that, guys. It's all right. Um likes do help for sure. But more than anything, it lets me know that um you like the content. And if you do like the content, then you might as well hit it because it's free. Anyway, slide of Okay. Okay. So what I first thought when I saw this fragrance was maybe it's some kind of fougere because of fern. Fougere is French for fern. Malcolm says he doesn't care for Tango by um, Mosque Milano. That's a great scent. I do love Tango. Very rich amber fragrance. I think that was composed by Cecile Zorokin, one of my favorites. This is coming across as a fougere. This is, uh, Waffles, you're right. No, you're right. Again, that's what I'm trying to say. The more likes, the more it's suggested. So there is something to it. I don't want to make this video about the algorithm. I appreciate it. I just want, I want you to know that I appreciate it. Okay. I'm getting a green fern quality. I'm getting like a barbershop feel here, but it's very different. There's something kind of like dark and smoky about this, but not. it's still pretty bright and fresh, but there's something like a smoky woods to it that kind of like offsets the cleanliness of the scent. It is clean. It is kind of like, yeah, you would wear it when you're dressed up on, you know, during the day, maybe in the warmer weather when you want to be more dapper or something like that. But there's something about it that has, there's some depth here that's a little bit darker. Um, I'm really curious. I want to put this on skin. I, I think there's three fragrances. Uh, I'm going to put no more than three fragrances on my skin. This will be one of them. Nothing there. I'm going to put this on my hand. Quite an atomizer on these things. And I think these are 35 milliliters, such a strange bottle size, but love these bottles. Um, they haven't changed them. Well, they have a, kind of a newer style for some of them, but I love the style. It works. It's very unique. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I sprayed it on skin. This is, I'm going to put this down. This is kind of a fougere. Um, it does have an herbaceous quality. It's kind of green and fern-like, you know, if you can imagine being out in a forest and like the fresh green woodiness of fern, which I guess is kind of a fantasy note because maybe fern doesn't have a scent from what I've understood about the fougere genre. That's like what a fern might smell like, basically. That is what they're going for. Got a little tester sticker here. I'm going to see if I can get this off. Um, but it does smell kind of like your classic barbershop scent. There's a creamy kind of smoothness to it, almost a little bit sweet in the background, like from a coumarin or a tonka bean 
or something like that. I'm surprised it came off pretty smoothly. But there is something a little bit brash in the background, kind of spicy, dark, woody, almost leathery, but quite green and clean, but not green like Beach Hut Man or like, you know, the original Polo or like Moussi Lumine from Rogue Perfumery. It's not like that kind of green. There's something like even resinous about it. This is super not what I was expecting, even at first spray. I'm going to look this up. I have my phone here. And we're going to look up Slide of Fern. I don't know when this came out. I'm so behind on the brand. I feel like this is relatively new, maybe last year. No, it came out this year, 2022. This is a brand new scent. Um, they have a whole write-up here. Let's see. So the notes. Lavender, mastic. What is? I know I've smelled mastic before. It's like a balsamic note with some citrus and fig. Is it fruity? A little bit. Yeah, a little fruity. Yeah, which is so unusual for a fougere. <laughs> you don't really experience fruits. Tim, you're in Beaverton, and I used to live in Beaverton. Good to see you. Um, we got a heart of geranium, narcissus, and tuberose. So a floral heart, but still quite fresh. I'm not getting a ton of white florals. Um, I am getting a little bit of an earthiness, which could come from the narcissus. And the freshness from geranium keeps it a little bit lively. But I'm not getting a ton of tuberose. A little bit. Tuberose can be kind of like this humid thick floral scent when it's really overdone like in something like carnal flower from frederick mall which i have smelled it is like you're walking into a greenhouse filled with tuberose but in this case it's very toned back just adding to the core of the scent so it's not so transparent we have a base of oak moss we have birch wood that's the smokiness uh devin this is not white whale this is slide of fern but we do have white whale, which I will smell in a bit. I was getting that smoky woodiness that is coming from birch wood. We got the oak moss as well. We have sandalwood and there's tonka bean in here, giving it that slight sweetness. Hmm. I like this. This is a different kind of fougere. This is different. I haven't really smelled a fougere quite like this. It might be this combination of elements like the fruitiness that's very unusual with uh, some balsamic qualities with the smoky wood. In Inside of the kind of regular fougere um, formula, which is very aromatic and, and herbaceous and again, a little bit sweet and creamy and smooth, like a barber shop, like a barber, like um, like a shaving cream, but not exactly that. Devin, thanks so much. This is the first fragrance. You haven't missed much. Pacific Rock Moss, I was just speaking about that. That is the only fragrance I've smelled from um, that brand. What were they called? Goldfield and Banks. Here's one thing I love about Mask Milano. On the bottle, I'm going to take off the cap. And I was planning to do a whole video on this. You have the name of the fragrance, but then, can I? Yeah, you see that this is the perfumer's name. Her name is, I think, Sarah. What is her name? Stephanie, sorry, Stephanie B Bacuch, Bacuche. They put the perfumer's name on the bottle. That might sound like a small gesture, but this is simply, crediting the artist publicly not everyone does that i know there's reasons for it especially with designer brands you'll never see that but there are a few brands i really appreciate who do this frederick mall is one of them sarah baker is one of them mas milano is one of them i'm sure there are others i really really appreciate that credit the perfumer you wouldn't have this if it wasn't for them you might as well put their name somewhere Anyway, I, I, I've actually put this out on Instagram a while back and I had a, it was a big uh, discussion. And a lot of people were 
playing devil's advocate and saying, well, you know, you know, the brand doesn't want to tie itself to a perfumer in case they don't affiliate with the perfumer anymore. I'm like, I get it. But in the music industry, you can't get it. Well, people try to get away with that, with discrediting or not crediting, but uh, it's still against the law. <laughs> so there's the, this law does not exist in perfumery, which is sad, but I don't know. When this happens, I appreciate it. Exactly. That means you can look up their other creations as well. When you know who it is, if you like it, then you can look them up. Okay, let's move on. Um, we're going to dive into, we've got the House of Blend Oud. I have a few fragrances here. I don't know anything about them, so I don't know where to begin. Oh, we still have more rest. What is this? More from Blend Oud. Excuse me. We have so much stuff. I don't even know what to start with. Okay, you guys help me choose here. I'm going to hold up three fragrances. No, I'm going to hold up two fragrances. Let's keep this simple. Um, we're going to hold up. We have Bark, Woof Woof. And then I'm going to hold up Gold Oud. Whether or not you've smelled either of these, vote which one you want me to smell first. We have Bark and we have Gold Oud, all coming from the same brand, Blend Oud, which I have no experience with. I'm going to scroll through these comments while I attempt to hold these in front of me. Gold Oud or Bark? Let's see. People saying more dope than Frederick Mall. I see gold. I see bark. Okay. Gold, 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 gold. Bark, 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 gold. Okay. It's kind of even, but I'm seeing a lot of gold. Am I seeing a lot of gold? We're going to do them both. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with gold. All right. Let's get this open. At this rate, we are not going to be smelling a ton of fragrances because I'm not going to be here for more than an hour. We'll smell as much as we can. I do want to try to give as much time to each scent as I can. Unlike some people I've seen who do unboxing videos, I'm not going to say any names. Wow. Okay. Here's the box. I slipped off the sleeve. Inside is this box. Okay, this is the Voyage collection, Voyage. And open it up, this is a 60 mil bottle. And rightfully, it's gold. Gold Oud. Okay. Nice. Bottle, beautiful. Have I seen this cat before? I'm always curious about that. Let me see. I don't think so. I have another fragrance here in my cabinet. Uh, no, it's not the same cat. All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Sometimes these brands will, you know, they'll get their packaging from the same places, but no, this is not the same. It's similar. So we have Gold Oud. Um, again, I don't know anything about this. We're just going to spray it. Cam says, nice bottle. Does it feel cheap? You know, the cap is nice. The cap is pretty heavy and metal. I would say the bottle is a little bit thinner than it looks. It doesn't have a ton of weight to it at all, but, um, you know. It looks nice, nice paint, gold paint. May come up, may come off with time. I don't know, but anyway, let's see how the juice is. That's what matters the most. I just sprayed that all over my leg. Wonderful. Hmm. This is gold, dude. In the air, I was immediately reminded of something like 
Alexandria II from Zerzhov. But up close, it's more oody. It has a little bit of a funk to it. It's, it was definitely sweeter in the air, almost like a vanilla like sweetness up close. It is, it's nice. It's not overly funky. There's a little bit of this kind of urinal quality to it, <laughs> which I'm sure sounds terrible. Brian Kim says, oud is quite difficult to handle. I mean, as is, you know, I guess anything that's unfamiliar is going to be a little bit tricky at first, but with time and exposure, you get used to it. I, on paper, right now, this does not smell good. This smells like a public bathroom. What? On paper. I'm going to slow down here <laughs> and take my own advice. I do want to just point out that I'm smelling these things on paper up close, which is a completely different experience than on skin in the air, which is more realistic. But let's check out what's actually in this. I might come back to it because right now, this does not smell good. Um, a lot of people seem to like it. Well, 32 volts on Fragrantica, average rating of 4.16. And these notes, the Ylang Ylang Fig? What? Okay. And there's definitely, it's, yeah, it's a synthetic oud, birch wood, patchouli, there's some rose. On the paper, I'm getting a, as it's developing, I'm getting a little bit more um, complexity. Maybe a touch of fruitiness. Do people say this smells like anything? People say it smells like oud wood. A few people say it smells. A little bit, but not really, a little bit. The oud quality is kind of like that. It doesn't come off as the most authentic oud, um, but it's also not, I don't know. This I don't know. I'm not moved by this right now. I'm not going to spend too much time harping on it. I want to find the good stuff. Right now, at least on the paper, on paper, again, I'm stressing that on paper, I'm not caring for this. Maybe I'll come back to it. We're going to move on. Now, okay, okay. Again, I'm not going to let that be my ultimate assessment of this fragrance, nor the brand. Let's smell bark. Let's keep the train moving. Let's keep it moving. How's everyone doing? Maybe public public bathrooms is what they're going for. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, it started to smell a little bit less like that. But I was just yesterday, I um, went to the coast with Grace. And, um, you know, where there, it was like a little park area where there's the beach and then there was a public restroom. And this brings me back to the time I went in the public restroom yesterday. So I don't know. We'll see. Here's Bark. Okay, slide the sleeve off. This is why I would not suggest blind buying a ton of fragrances at once. Again, I did not buy these, but had I been able to try them all, maybe I wouldn't have bought them all. Uh, okay. I just, I hate coming from one disappointment to the next. I don't want this to be a reflection of the brand or the fragrance, um, but we do have a little bit of a inconsistency here on the bottle. We see that the, uh, the plate is kind of crooked and you can see the glue underneath. 
this cap is a little banged up. Okay. Uh, Mr. Veteran Vlogs, thank you so much. Millicene Imperial, good stuff. Yeah, classic. Okay, I'm not trying to be a downer here. I'm just being real, guys. Let's give this a spray. This is called Bark. Yeah, I'm not, again, I'm just showing you what I what I see. I'm not trying to, like, show out for anybody in particular. This is just what I'm getting. Oh, that made my nose tickle. I have to sneeze. Don't sneeze. I don't like sneezing on live streams. Ooh, I think that was the spices. I hope. Okay, um, this reminds me of something, I can't place it. Scent-wise, it's, it's okay. I like it more than the other one. It's not moving me. It, again, reminds me of something. Uh, the quality is coming off a little scratchy, just a little bit. Let me look up what we're actually smelling here. Maybe I'll get a better idea. Because sometimes I smell a fragrance, and I'm like, oh, it smells kind of scratchy, and it turns out to be just some kind of animalic note that was intended to be that way. Okay, so we have bark. Not some great ratings. We got cedar, spicy mint, grapefruit blood, mandarin, and orange in the top notes. Again, here it is. And heart, we have cinnamon, spices, and rose. Okay, I was getting a ton of spices. I'm glad those are spices. And we have amber woods, they say white woods, leather and patchouli. Okay, so ultimately this is, it's coming off fairly pleasant. I can say that. I would probably wear this at least at home to try it out, to, uh, at least at first. It's not moving me. It's not coming across as like highly unique. Be Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to show this to you guys. This is what most people say this fragrance reminds them of. I'm going to zoom in. One million. <laughs> it kind of does. I do see that vibe. Yeah. Yeah, now it's stuck in my head. This is kind of like one million, but like more woody, like darker with more woods. In fact, now I'm looking at the notes here, it stands out. Yeah, the, a lot of this is very one million esque in terms of these notes. Ah, yeah, it's like a woodier one million. Did this come? When did this come out? They don't say. Because sometimes these Middle Eastern brands come out with stuff before the European ones. No, I don't know when this came out. When did this brand start? 2014. Yeah, that was after 1 million. So, no, this is definitely inspired by that. Ah, disappointed. Okay. Okay. Um. Mm. I, again, I don't like this type of energy for a live stream, but this is what we got. You guys are getting what I have. We're going to pivot. We're going to shift gears. <laughs> I'm going to move to another brand. We're going to go to the brand of Moresque. And there's a fragrance here that came in a tester box. The tester box like literally disintegrated in transit, and the bottle was kind of sitting free in the box. Luckily, it was fine. This is called what is it blue sahara is that what this is sahara blue sahara blue from moresque i've tried one fragrance from this brand and i featured it in a video and i think it was called seta and i actually really liked that scent 
And I think maybe some of you have tried that. I've seen this bottle on Instagram and whatnot, and uh, beautiful, beautiful bottle. I just love this design. It goes all the way around. It's just, it has a lot of depth to it. Same with this lovely cap. Anyway, we're going to see how this is. Has anyone tried this? Has anyone tried Sahara Blue? I'm going to give it a spray on a blotter. I hate to say it. Please forgive the siren. I have my window open because it's very warm in here, so I need some air coming in. Um, whoever that is, I hope they're okay. Boy, thing pass. All right. Um, what was I going to say? I hate to say this, but I'm glad I didn't put these blend ooze on my skin. <laughs> Div divine. <laughs> Maybe the police looking to find that nasty perfume. <laughs> I, you, I didn't say it, man. You did. But, I mean, I said what I said. It's fine. Uh, where I get the V-neck. Hey, man, into the AM. I talk about them all the time. I don't have them linked in this video, but I got so much, so many uh, shirts from them, and I love this stuff. Real simple, easy, versatile. Um, yeah, I think you can use, I have a code. I think it's Stay Fresh. Maybe get the 10% off or something like that. I don't remember. Anyway. That's real, man. Yeah, that, that is part of what we're doing here as reviewers. When we get stuff like this, we didn't pay for them, but we get to tell you, and again, our job is to be honest, that is this good or not? Is it worth your money? Now, this is just my opinion. This is just my little nose. These two nostrils, which I've had my whole life. I've done a lot of smelling with them. Um, so this is just me. You can take it to leave it. If it still sounds interesting to you. Again, the last thing I'm trying to do is sway you. I'm not going to say don't try this. I will never say that. Don't try this because I don't like it. All I will say is I don't like it. But if you seem to have interest, Try it. Try it. Don't let me sway you from anything. Don't let anyone sway you from anything. If there's any reviewer out there who's like, don't buy this, and you actually want to buy it, then get a sample and see for yourself. Okay. Do I usually blow out my nose or clean the pipes before smelling? <laughs> Sometimes I'll sniff my shirt. It's a good thing to sniff something neutral to clear the palate um, if you're sniffing a bunch of stuff. Okay, in the air, I'm already enjoying this. It's coming across a little bit clean and maybe fruity, but different. Hmm, okay. Um, du Maurier, what do I mean when I say barbershop feel? That is, it's one of those things that if you experience it, you know what I mean. But historically, what it means is that this fragrance, whatever the fragrance is, is made to be reminiscent of the cleanliness that you experience when you are at the barbershop or come out of the barbershop. And literally, we're talking about the smells, like the smell of the shaving foam or a soap of some something like that. You know, that clean shave, that fresh haircut. And that can be associated, obviously, with the vibe of that, but also with the smell. Lavender is a big component in those kind of fragrances too. Hope that makes sense. This is called, uh, Devin, this is called Sahara Blue. This reminds me of something. Mm, what is that? That's Penny's meowing outside the room right now. This, it's really nice. It reminds me of I can't, I can't place it. It's very loose. I'm getting something that I have or if I can't place it. It might come to me later. I have the fragrance up here on Fragrantica. Let's check out these notes. Oh, it's reminding me of, I know it now. It's reminding me of a fragrance from Atelier des Ors called Riviera Drive. I have that. That is a very like bright citrusy lemon fragrance with lots of rosemary. 
It's very, very light. This is like a denser version of that to my nose so far. So the notes, we have ginger, we have lemon. Okay, definitely lemon. Pink pepper, Granny Smith, apple. Definitely getting that fruitiness. Coriander, lavender, jasmine in the heart. Oak moss, seaweed, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of a slightly marine-like quality. Hmm, this is cool. It definitely reminds me of the Atelier des Ors, not a one-to-one -one by any means, but it is the same kind of combination of elements to me. Almost fruity, citrusy, tart, bright, mouth-watering with, literally my mouth is watering, with um, some herbs. People say this, you know what, man, and I was going to say this smells a little bit like, <laughs> it has a little bit of an Aventus feel. People say it does smell like Aventus and Hachivat. I can see that. Man, <laughs> now that's all I can smell. That's all I can smell. It smells good. I'm not mad at this one. It smells good. Um, it does have some elements to it that are a little bit different from the other two, these other ones. People are saying 425 for 50 mil. Oh my gosh. Lewis says Max Roma. Yeah, guys, I got this from Max Aroma, not from the brand. So obviously from the brand, you're going to be paying full retail. If you're able, if you have access to a discount site like Max Aroma, then it's going to be cheaper there. But you guys know what I say. Don't worry about the price because you have no business blind buying a bottle of this. Don't even worry about it because don't buy it. I'm not showing this to you so you can go buy it. At least the bottle. If you're interested, get a sample. I'm sure there's samples in a lot of places, but don't worry about that price tag. If you smell it from the sample and you love it, then maybe you'll find the price worth it. Okay. Okay. People are saying that's Max Roma's price. That's Max Roma's price then. Then that I guess that's what it is. But nonetheless, don't buy it. Don't buy it. <laughs> it's that simple. Just if you if it sounds interesting, get a sample and then you can see what you feel. Only you can place value where value should be placed. Only you can justify a price tag. All right. So if you want to know what I think, I think this is decent. And just like any of these fragrances, I'm saying do not go blind by this bottle. Do not. That's all I'm saying. Because some people might love this and might find it worth the price. I don't know. I on, on paper, I can't say it's worth the price right now. On skin, who knows? But this is a step up from the other two from Blend Oud. Um, let's check on, I want to check on. The first fragrance here real quick, Slide of Fern. This has gotten more green and more smoky woody. I like that. That's nice. Lewis said, this bottle is my centerpiece. So Lewis, I guess you're a fan. All right. Best place for samples. There's a lot of great places. Um, again, Max Aroma, they often do have little samples, like those little um, lipstick atomizers. Um, Decant X is, is one of my favorite places. I don't think they're going to have most of these fragrances here um, that I'm going to talk about in this video. But when you can find some there, uh, it's a great place to get it, it's, especially if in the, uh, in the United States. They do ship to the U.S. for free with no minimum. Okay, let's move on. That's that one from Moresque. I want to smell one more Moresque. Um, we're going to give this a shot. This is called Royal. This is the limited edition from the Secret Collection. We're going to smell one more Moresque. We're going to smell one more Mas Milano, which is brand new White Whale. And then we're going to smell one Amouage. And then I'm gonna let you go. Let me know if that sounds like a plan. Dapper Daddy says, since Split has the Moss Milano. There you go, guys, check it out. I don't have any codes or anything with them, but check them out. 
Okay. Mares. Royal. I like the packaging. Very classy. Like that. Let's open her up. Oh, it opens up like this. Slides out. Oh, 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 oh. Alrighty. Oh my God. Guys, <laughs> we're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> Oh, man. I was expecting it to have a more snug feel in there. It didn't. <laughs> Everything's okay. We fell on my keyboard. Buttons still work. Bottles intact. We're good, y'all. We are good. Hey, man. This is live. I got to keep you guys here somehow. <laughs> anyway, this is called Royal. Let's look at the bottle. We're safe. Everything's stable. Gravity had its way, but we we're back on top. Okay. Royal. I like this cool little gradient. Similar cap, um, except we just have gold at the top, not blue. Anyway, let's give this a spray. This is called Royal. Let's see if it actually is Royal. All righty. My ankle's gonna be smelling real great. See, Steven, Steven's done it too. We're not the only ones. We're all victims to gravity here. Gravity doesn't care about us. If, you, if it catches you slipping, you will be slipping. Not what I was expecting. Right now, I'm reminded of this is so funny. I'm reminded of a, a stronger, denser version of Un Jardin Sur le Nil from Hermès. Is this thing leaking? This thing is freaking leaking. I was like, why is my finger wet? Did I do that? Maybe I did that. No. I think that happened as soon as I sprayed it. It was not like this. As soon as I sprayed it, it just kind of like, it couldn't hold it together anymore. Yikes. I mean, maybe I did do that because I dropped it and now it's all, mm, one second guys. Let's see if I can clean this up. I have a little paper towel here, by, just by chance here. Brian says drop test failed. Yes. If you're planning on dropping this, don't. <laughs> Do not. Okay, I just want to make sure that I didn't loosen this atomizer or something like that. Yeah, this, again, I, I still stand by what I just said. Um, it smells like a, a stronger version of Un, Un Jardin Sur le Nil. Um, so far. I'm going to spray it again just to see what happens. Hopefully, this is not actually leaking. Uh, it's actually leaking. Is it? I think I just saw some come out. Yeah. That sucks. Okay. I may have loosened the seal. That's what happens when we do it live, I guess. It still sprays which is great, but it looks like we'll be losing a little bit of juice every time we spray it. All right, thank you all for being with me through this madness. Okay, not what I expected. Not what I expected at all. Uh, this is kind of fruity and green and fresh. Um, I was expecting maybe something richer, like a, an oud or, or something with vanilla or amber. This is coming off pretty, it's, it's strong. Cam says go, Gorilla Glue. I have some Gorilla Glue. I might give that a try. We'll see. Because that's kind of a bummer. But I don't know. Maybe I didn't do it. it, it 
I, I'll never know. I could have done this myself. It could have already been like this. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, let's check this out. Fruity. That's the top of chord. Here are the notes. White peach, rhubarb, grapefruit, pink pepper, heart, iris, peony, jasmine, and the base we have ambroxan and woods. I'm definitely getting ambroxan for sure. It's it's nice, but it it um it feels kind of top heavy, as is you know the notes show it. It feels like it doesn't have a ton of legs to it. Like it's not gonna like I feel like it'll stick around a while, but I feel like it's not gonna really develop into anything more interesting. It's just gonna turn like soft and woody. But we'll see how it is on the skin. People say, okay, so no one is saying it smells like Un Jardin sur the Mill. That's what I got when I first sprayed it. People say it reminds them of Flower of Immortality. I don't know that. That's from Killian. What's up, Andrew? Good to see you. Zendarius, is it better than? No, I can't say there's anything better, and I don't really like quite saying that. It smells of high quality. It's really pleasant. Um, it seems to have some good presence as well. I think this is going to be really nice. I actually do like it. I do like this. I would definitely wear this on a day out in the heat. It's going to be like 100 degrees today um, Fahrenheit. I'm not going to wear this today, but I'm digging this. This is nice. <clears throat> it's nice. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to put this down. I'm running out of desk space here. We'll put this down, put down this leaky bottle that I apparently ruined. Frag dude, what's up? Divine says, I suspect it's getting, it's targeting that killing since the killing also has a peach rose. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, summertime appropriate for sure, Cam. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's, we got two more. We're going to smell two more, and then I'm going to get you on your way. We have the new one from Mas Milano. I'm not dropping this. <sighs> this is called White Whale. I don't know anything about this fragrance. You can see we have the name of the perfumer, Christian Alori. They have the notes on the back. I will be ref uh, referencing that soon after I smell it. Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, I thought I would sail about a little and see the watery part of the world. H. Melville. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not familiar. Anybody know who that is? Um, I'm really curious about this scent, though. Right. So here's our bottle. Beautiful as usual. I love how they have a little, you know, different design on the front to represent the scent each time. If you want to know what these Roman numerals mean, each fragrance is based on an act and an opera. So we have the act and the scene. Mas Milano has several fragrances out at this point. So we're on act four, scene four. That's what this fragrance represents. Um, I don't know exactly the division of the acts. I assume the acts are the collections and the scenes are each fragrance in each collection, but I don't know exactly what each act represents. Um, is this also act four? It's got to be. Okay, so slide of fern is actually act four, scene three. Not, don't, don't focus on me, focus on this. Yeah, act four, scene three. So we're going to put White Whale. We're going to skip Anthony Donfrio, Herman Melville. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to skip paper. We're going to put this on skin. Here we go. Okay.
Muko again. No matter whether it's a designer or a niche haul, you shouldn't be blind buying bottles. Get samples if it sounds interesting. That goes for everyone. I'm going to keep saying that. Okay. This is in the air. This is quite aquatic, woody, salty, a little bit of a citrusy vibe, but maybe a little green and herbal or like seaweedy in a way. Um, I'm just going to waft it. Brian, atomizer is fantastic on these bottles. Really, really good. I, oh, okay. Let me let me get it up close. Ooh, okay. Um, there's something kind of resinous about the scent, even though it is fresh, aquatic. Again, like marine sea salty, seaweedy in a way, maybe a little smoky. There's a little bit of a fruity, something a little sweeter. Immediately when I sprayed it in the air, I was reminded of um, Oud Mineral from Tom Ford. But this is nowhere near as smoky as that. This has a little bit of a sweetness to it. This is nowhere near as fishy as that can be. But there's something kind of resinous about it, which is kind of a duality. It's like you have fresh aquatic elements and then you have this kind of darker balsamic almost sweet sticky quality i will say this up close <laughs> it doesn't smell exactly like this but it reminds me of a watermelon jolly rancher but way more interesting <laughs> again that is up close Lavar, thank you so much. Good to see you. But it's nice. It doesn't smell like a watermelon Jolly Rancher, but I'm getting that vibe up close. Let's look up the notes. Again, we are smelling white whale from Mosque Milano if you're just joining in. This thing is like I have to move it opposite. White whale. Okay, let's look it up. There we go. I believe this came out this year. Yes. Here are our notes. We have salt. We have olibanum, which is incense. We have pepper, Madagascar pepper. It's very broad. In the middle, we have osmanthus, which is kind of creating a little bit of that fruity quality. Osmanthus can smell a little bit like an apricot or some kind of stone fruit. Violet, which is a, a sweeter floral. Ambergris, bringing that kind of airy, musky, salty vibe. And we have Oris, which is kind of filling out the fragrance, making it a little bit thicker, maybe a touch of a buttery quality. But in the base, we have cedar. We have labdanum. Labdanum is the resin that I was getting here. It is a little sticky and dark. Maybe even a little bit leathery, smoky, but very slight. We have vetiver and patchouli. This is cool. I haven't really smelled anything like this. Again, I mentioned oud mineral. No, this is not that. It is. It has a number of different elements to that that make, uh, set it apart. Does it remind anyone of anything else? No, not really. I see some whack, some weird, very questionable. Oh no, some people say it reminds me of reminds them of Dot Comme de Garçon. But I don't I don't know that fragrance is only two people said that. Muko, is this unisex? Yeah, for sure. I like this a lot. This is a different take on an aquatic. Brian Ambergris. No ambergris on whale. No, there's ambergris in here. Yeah, I mentioned that. It has to be. I like this a lot. As far as aquatic fragrances go, this is one of my favorite new aquatics that I've smelled in a long time. It's rich, 
it's just it has so much going for it. There's a lot of depth and interest here. It still comes off as wearable. I would still easily wear this in the summer, anytime really. That's the one thing about aquatics; they're pretty versatile, especially when they're done with it done like this with a lot of depth. This can be a little bit more elegant than just easy breezy, fresh out of the shower, running errands kind of thing. This has more more going on where it could be again more of a formal scent for a warm event even if you're dressed up it's becoming woodier and drier as it sits i'm liking it even more this is dope this is good get you a sample of this if it sounds interesting to you i can easily say get you a sample of white whale i like this this is cool Devin, I know you were asking me about this the other day. This is cool. This is different. I'll see how it develops. I'll see how it does with a full wearing. I'd say get a sample. Cam, good for office? Yeah, I would say so. Maybe don't spray a ton of it. It seems to be pretty present. Exactly. Yeah, you guys are looking at bottle prices. Don't look at bottle prices. <laughs> You're going to be disappointed. Get a sample if it sounds interesting. If you love it, then it might be worth the bottle price. But you can only know that after you try it. Don't blind buy it. Don't blind buy a bottle. Alex, yes. After this, um, I'll go back into the description and I will post the names of the fragrances I smelled. Um, and I have more here. There's probably at least one, two, three, four, six others in this box from X Roma that I did not try. So you'll be seeing those in later videos, but we're gonna get to the main event. Is this the main event? I guess I would say most of you might have the most anticipation about this fragrance. I do for sure. I didn't wanna make this whole video about this fragrance, but this is a big release because I love this brand. Some of you were already posting about it in the comments, and you're correct. This is from Amouage. They did send this to me. They sent it to me. Again, they sent it to me. I did not pay for it. They sent it to me. If you didn't hear what I just said, they sent it to me. I am happily saying that. They sent me a little letter. I'm thrilled to share with you our newest addition to the library collection, Opus 16. Opus 14, sorry. I think it's Opus 14. I'm not great with Roman numerals. Royal Tobacco. Royal Tobacco is a heady tour de force inspired by the evocative accord of tobacco and frankincense and the cultural innovation that led to new paths of knowledge, a contemporary tobacco that is respectful of the nobility of the raw material itself, of the dried, rolled, veined, smoked, and leathery leaf, enhanced with sweet licorice root and prunol and bright aromatics that result in a rich and sensory experience with a vintage patina. You know what? I'm usually not a fan of write-ups by fragrance brands. They're usually really corny and they kind of like, they're too inflated to me. They're, they get inflated when they talk about what they will do for you. Ironically enough, I like, well, I like to talk about fragrances in a pragmatic sense, in terms of practicality, in terms of wearing them and what the vibe will be like. But a lot of the time when it's written by a brand and they're like, oh, you will be, you know, you will be intoxicated by the alluring vanilla and the sensual musk will enrapture you in new beginnings, whatever the heck it says, <laughs> it's usually really corny. But this is great because they just say, these are the notes, this is what we're going for. This is what it may smell like. I love that. It comes across as humble. This is a humble write-up. This is a sincere write-up. They're, they're not trying to put a bunch of fluff. Uh, and yes, I see some of you guys putting Cecile Zorokian down in the chat. Her name is not on this card, but she is the perfumer for this. And Amouage doesn't put their perfumers on the packaging but they are very open about them. If you follow them on social media, 
They are always heralding their perfumers. Cam says, can I interview Cecile about this one? Maybe. I do kind of know Cecile. Um, I could reach out to her and see if she's available. She might be down. If she's available, she might be down. I'll look into that. Here's our box. Um, I have zero experience with the old library collection as it was. Obviously, Amwaj got some new creative direction, and they're kind of going in a different direction, which I have been enjoying as of the last few years. They've been putting out some very thoughtful and interesting stuff that is a little different from what they've done before, but still paying homage to the heritage, which is the Oman region. And it's... Uh, I guess it's history and the things that make it special. <sighs> the gift of kings. Okay, so we have another trap here. I'm not going to drop this bottle. I'm just going to open it regularly. I'm not going to be all flashy. And good. Look, at, look, it's already kind of sticking out too. So that would have been a trap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is different. This bottle, like the feel in the hand is like stone. I don't know if any of you have uh, touched any of these bottles. It's like a stoner. It's actually kind of weird, honestly. I'm not used to it, but it's cool. It's different, but it's still very much the I'm Wash bottle style. This cap is matte. It's not the, the stone-like finish here, but it is. This is, this is beautiful. I love their uh, presentation. I always have high-quality stuff very iconic so yes opus 14 royal tobacco yes slideshow yeah this is it's like a rough texture um like a stone or something like that it's cool the cap the cap is maybe a little bit rubbery but not really the bottle not at all okay let's give it a spray on the forearm and then i'm gonna let you guys go i've already been here longer than i want Wow. <laughs> this thing, as soon as I sprayed it, it just came for the throat. Wow. Ooh, that is strong. I immediately got like frankincense, like resinous, oh, like almost like interlude man. Just like smacked across the face with definitely a dry, earthy, leafy tobacco. And again, I'm just smelling it in the air. I'm not smelling this up close. It's very resinous. It's very balsamic. It is very incense-y. It is dry. It is sweet, kind of in an ambery-like way, but not overtly amber or vanilla. It's more like a resinous sweetness. Like a and there's a pruny feel to it in terms of like a fruitiness, but not overly fruity. Brian King, turkey vibe? No, at least not up close. At least I'm not in the air. Uh, divine, really dark stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty dark. It's very strong. Um, I struggle with tobacco. I like Naxos. The tobacco is not shy here. Um, I I think there's plum in it. Maybe, we'll check. Okay, I'm gonna smell this up close. Again, this is not, this is what a fragrance enthusiast does. We smell up close, but this is not how you will wear the scent. Mmm, this is rich. Dang, that's rich. <laughs> this is a slap. Okay, wow. Um. I would need some time to really break this down. But what I'm getting is, is what I said. I mean, I'm getting this very strong, slightly incensey smoky. When I say incensey smoky, I mean that it's a smokiness that does not represent fire. It's like a cooling smokiness that is still kind of dense. 
Um, again, this is called Royal Tobacco, Opus 14. Um, so you have that texture, this smoky, cooling, incensey texture with a very dense, resinous quality that's kind of dark. So it's almost like a sticky sweetness that's not vanilla. It doesn't smell edible. There's a little bit of this pruny quality to it. And there's definitely a very prominent, robust, leafy, earthy, dry tobacco. Is it a unisex fragrance? Yeah, I would say it is. I'd say this is, it is unisex. It's a personality. If it sounds interesting to you, you can get a sample. Again, do not go out and blind buy this. It is not cheap. I think I saw it retailing for over 350, something like that. But it is for 100 mil. Um, nonetheless, don't blind buy it. Wow. Yeah, there's the, the resinous quality, resinous incense quality does remind me of interlude. It is that type of presence. Um, I'm pretty sure they're using some of the same ingredients because a lot of them they source in Oman. They are kind of exclusive there. Divine says I'm washed, sells two milliliter samples for 10 bucks. Yeah, that's awesome. Go get you a sample if it sounds interesting. Um, I do have a link in the description, as I said, and I think it even says there it is an affiliate link. Maybe I don't, I, mean, I, I don't know if it says it there for the Amouage. I may have forgot that, but the Amouage link is an affiliate link. Um, if you do want to get a sample or something like that, it will. I will get a small kickback at no additional cost to you. So if you want to support the channel, you can consider uh, purchasing anything from that link. But don't go, don't buy the bottle, please. Don't, don't. Moise is asking, is this something like Herod? No, <laughs> no, this is nothing like Herod. Nothing like Herod. Um, Herod is more of like a cinnamon vanilla tobacco, almost like. But there's like a dried fruit quality too. This is more smoky, dark, resinous, earthy tobacco. Paul is asking fall and winter. If you're asking me, yes, absolutely fall and winter. I would not wear this in summer. I know people who would. Happy day for them. But I would save this. I'm not wearing this on a 100 degree day like today. I'm going to look this up, get these notes. Unless the notes are somewhere in the box. Probably not. Um, I'm just going to look it up here on Fragrantica. All right. So here it is. Here are our notes. Again, perfumed by Cecile Zorokian. Top notes of cardamom, LME resin, basil. And if, if you're in the UK, you probably say basil. That's fine. Uh, bergamot, olibanum, which is incense, and anise. Okay. Can be like a licorice kind of spice. Heart of tobacco, orange blossom, prunol. I don't know what prunol is. It is an, a synthetic molecule that refers to the order of plum. Okay. So I do get that pruny feel. That's where that's coming from. We have licorice. I'm sorry for all the sirens. It must be fire out there. Um, it's getting a little smokier and darker as it sits. Like woody, like dark woods is really coming through. Um, we also have rose lavender fenugreek. What in the world is that? Uh, essence from the yellowish golden seeds, seeds of trigonella. Some okay, it's used as a spice. It renders a maple syrup note. Oh, common also to immortel. I get a little bit of that vibe. Anyway, moving on. Osmanthus is in here. I don't get much of that. Birch tar, the birch tar is really coming through. You have to like a dark, smoky wood in addition to tobacco to appreciate this. Um, it wasn't there before quite as much. Now it's like, it's really coming through. This base is heavy. So in, in addition to birch tar, we have vanilla. We have gaiac wood, which is a slightly smoky wood that can be kind of barbecue-ish, but very light. Uh, vetiver. We have oud. It may not be, it says agarwood, that may not be a natural oud, but doesn't smell unnatural. Musk, olibanum, more olibanum. Okay, more incense. We have benzoin. We have lavender, uh, sorry, labdanum and myrrh. So benzoin, labdanum, and myrrh are all resins. And also peru balsam, very resinous. And then we have tonka bean, which is 
making it quite sweet. A little penny. <laughs> penny bracelet penny, I guess you wanted to get in. This is rich stuff. Um, this is just my first impression. I have to give this a full wearing. I have to wear it in the right occasion. At least for me, I'm not wearing this out in the sun in the summer. I'll wait till the evening time to throw this on to when it's gonna have room to breathe because this is strong. This is not a weak fragrance. This is a statement maker. This is not gonna be for everyone. So what I suggest, if it sounds interesting to you, um, go to the website. Again, there's a link in, my, in the description that is an affiliate link. Um, if you want to help give back to the channel and get you a sample, as Divine had said, I think it was Divine who said it. Yes, Amwash sells two milliliter samples for 10 bucks. Get you a little two mil sample if that sounds like it's worth it and check it out. Pat, if you don't want to get that job, then sure, you can totally do that. <laughs> Yeah, don't wear this to a job interview that heavy. This is this is something else, man. But also not really surprising for the house. The house of Amwash is known for its fragrances like this that are robust, that are unapologetic, that are even a little challenging. I like it a lot. Um, we're going to put that down real quick. I'm going to check out these Mas Milanos real quick. We have White Whale in the right hand. We have Slide of Fern in the left. White Whale smells phenomenal. That's really, really beautiful. A lot of depth for an aquatic. Slide of Fern, a very different take on a, a green, mossy, clean fougere. It's a little darker than normal. Good stuff. Anyway, again, links down below. I will... After this stream, I will put the names of the fragrances that I tried in this video down in the description so you remember which ones they were. Um, Blend Oud, we will come back to. I'm a little bit a little bit disappointed with that. Again, there's others I haven't tried yet. Um, Gold Oud has gotten better. Gold Oud no longer smells like a public bathroom. Bark is okay. It's still a little bit 1 million-ish, but not bad. I actually like it more than 1 million. We'll get him on skin when the time is right. I want to thank you all for being here. So many of you were hanging around the whole time. As you can see, I'm hot because it's getting hot now. Um, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I feel it's crazy that you guys would want to hang out with me on a Saturday and watch me smell stuff that you can't smell. But I hope that I was able to maybe inspire your imagination um, while just trying to share my experience and hopefully you find something interesting enough to go check it out and get a sample. But again, do not blind buy bottles. All the fragrances I talked about today are expensive. So get a sample if you're interested. Thank you for tuning in. Do check out my video from yesterday if you missed it, talking about um, while I was reading your comments and it's utterly hilarious. And I really am proud of that video because it took me like five hours to edit. Um, but do check it out if you can. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you all on Monday.